there are times when we are met with fire. Even after going through difficult times, we are met with fire. But there comes a time when God is your only encouragement. God has good thoughts even in our suffering. God does not operate on the level of man. Let it be that God is just waiting for the day that we will seek his kingdom first and prioritize the things of the kingdom so that all these things shall follow us. Solomon knew <laughs> that he was not able to do anything unless he is helped by God. Our mandate as people of God is to go, to come, and to do. After this darkness, there is going to come a time when your prayer shall produce results in the name of Jesus. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, we cannot be able to receive and activate the promises of God. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. It's so good and so nice to be here once again to share the word of God. And I want to believe that uh, the Lord is good. He's good. Because one thing I know is that, as we say, the Lord is good all the time. And therefore, I believe that uh, He's been working out something good for you in your life. And I believe that. Uh, soon enough you shall see it because uh, what God has been doing in secret will soon be manifested. Um, I, I believe that uh, 
you are following this sermon and maybe perhaps you are with us last week but if not I want to carry on from where I left um, and uh, I had titled the message there comes a time when we are referring from the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 30 we started from verse 1 and um, it's a story of David and we are going to carry on from verse 8 through to 19 uh, today and see what the Lord is saying unto us. And the Bible says, And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the 600 uh, men that were with him, and came to the brook Bissau, um, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued, and he and 400 men, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Bissau. And they found an uh, Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and did eat. And they made uh, him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of uh, raisins. And when they had eaten or he had eaten, his spirit came again to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water for three days and uh, three nights. And uh, David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And where uh, art thou? Or wh from where art thou? And uh, he said, I am a, man, a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. Uh, my master left me because three days I, I, um, I, I fell ago, I fell sick. Uh, we made an invasion upon the south of uh, Cherithites and upon the coast of uh, which belongs to Judah and upon the south of Caleb and we burned Ziklag with fire. And uh, David said unto him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt never kill me, nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. And uh, when he had brought him down, behold, uh, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And uh, David smote them from the twilight uh, uh, evening unto, uh, even unto the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men which rolled uh, upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives, and uh, there was nothing lacking of them, uh, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Um, last week we we, we, we started with this series that there comes a time and I introduced this uh, man called David who was supposed to take over the reins of power from King Saul after Saul had been rejected by God and we found how he had been uh, um, uh, rejected by Saul, his brothers, uh, his allies and how the Amalekites had invaded uh, Ziklag and the, the things that he went through and therefore David uh, um, found himself in a very difficult situation 
as many of us find ourselves, that we have nowhere to run to, and even where we have sought refuge, there is a lot of like um, heat owing to fire because we find that uh, Ziklag had been burned with fire. And uh, today, uh, from where we have read, we uh, find that David is starting by inquiring. That's where we had stopped, that he inquired from the Lord and the Lord answered him. And uh, it is very important to realize that when we call him to the Lord, he answers us. And um, I said it is not everyone that is answered because some prayers have been declined to be answered, and but others have been answered. So it's a privilege when we call upon the Lord and he answers our prayer. Now today I want us to focus particularly on the road to recovery, a subtopic uh, on this series, there comes a time on the road to recovery. Because we found that uh, when the Amalekites came, they burnt the, 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 the camp of Ziklag, and when they burnt, they carried uh, the children and, and the wives, all the women that were there. They didn't leave anything together with uh, all the valuables. And therefore, these are people that are penniless, they are helpless, they have no allies, and they have no one. And uh, they, 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 they are just that way. They have nothing. They have nothing. And uh, David had become a constant victim. A constant victim in the manner in which he is being treated by his uh, latest allies, uh, his friends, who are talking about stoning him. And uh, you realize when he was, he was anointed, he uh, 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 became um, uh, wanted in his own hometown because uh, King Saul started pursuing him when he fought the battle with Goliath and there were praises showered upon him uh, again King Saul was jealous and started again pursuing him and he had fled to this land of the Philistines and the Philistines I told you last week that were beginning to mistrust him and they dismissed him from their battle because they were combining their forces to fight battles together but this particular time they were beginning to distrust David and they had uh, uh, set him aside and they were willing to fight alone. And um, his men started blaming him for the losses. They had lost their children and wives and all their properties and they started blaming David. And I told you last week, though David had lost everything also because they were in a similar situation but they were blaming David. And therefore that's why I'm saying that David all over his life he has become a constant victim and many of us are familiar with this or if you are not you know someone that has been a perpetual or perennial uh, perennial uh, victim they are always under pressure they are always complaining about something they are always losing something they are always making losses they are always here and there if 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 someone is against someone it is them someone is against them and you realize that uh, they become constant victims and i know you could be watching me this morning and maybe you have become a constant victim of everything anything that happens be it in your village be it uh, in your town be it in your country be it in your workplace be it in your school be it wherever you are even in your family sometimes it is possible that you have become a constant victim maybe even when from when you are a kid owing to some disadvantage that you have maybe even in your family maybe you could be short in size you could be weak um, uh, physically and, and and you have become victim because other people always do things or stuff against you they always like uh, intimidate you they always harass you and you have become a constant victim you are like david david had become a constant victim not because he chose to because you realize it is him that is doing at home the the donkey's work or the difficult jobs of going to take care of the hearts it, it, it is him that is being chased all over uh, it is him that is running here uh, up and down it is him that is losing everything it is him that again that is uh, 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 his, his uh, allies have turned into force they, they, they have risen against him it is him that is making losses always so that he is a victim but I want to tell you there comes a time where God desires to make you recover all 
because in the course of those losses you need to recover sometimes you need nothing new you need to recover what you have lost so that your joy will be um, uh, restored to you and you'll be content once again and David we find in verse 8 when he found himself in such a situation he inquired of the Lord and this inquiry has two things that came to my mind or oh, they are coming to light even as you read in verse 8 that David inquired of the Lord asking what he should do and the outcome so that David was concerned with the action and the outcome of that action and many of us have found ourselves that when we encounter difficult times number one many times we don't inquire from the Lord we inquire from friends we inquire from experts and everyone else we leave the Lord aside and then again if we inquire from the Lord we are not concerned with the outcome we are only concerned with the action shall I go shall I do shall I do this shall I do the other shall I do the other you know that is not enough David was concerned shall I pursue and if I pursue shall I overtake so he is concerned with the action and the outcome of that action and I want to advise us that whenever we inquire from the Lord let's not just inquire of what to do or what to become or what to be let's inquire of both the action and the outcome successful outcome of that action because when God realized that David was seeking even the outcome he went further because God at this point let me say that God answers beyond our prayer he answers beyond our desire he answers beyond our request because two concerns that David had the action to do shall I pursue and then again he is asking shall I overtake and what does God tell him pursue that is number one his answer to his question number two you shall overtake and number three you shall recover all without fail so that God answers beyond our prayer so so the most important thing for us is to get down on our knees and pray because God will always answer our prayer no matter what he answered the prayer of David and he will answer yours in Jesus mighty name because he answers beyond what we can ask of him now on the road to recovery there is a journey this is a journey we must realize that it's not an event and many of us we've made so many losses in our lives and we've lost so much and we expect that we are going to recover in an instant we expect that the recovery is um is an event something that is going to happen once and there we are that we wake up just one day and we have everything back and we pray and all of a sudden something happens we wait upon the Lord all of a sudden something happens no recovery is a journey it is a journey because this enemy who took David's possession for example and the families that is the wives and the children they did not come next door they left so that it was going to take them a long journey to go and pursue to go and pursue and therefore it is a journey it is a journey and there are some few things that we find here that facilitated that journey because in every journey you need some form of means facilitation for example if you're traveling sometimes you may need a vehicle you may use a plane sometimes train sometimes bicycle sometimes walk depending on the distance so that every journey require, requires some form of facilitation you cannot just embark on a journey and just begin 
without knowing how and which way and which path are you going to use and which means are you going to use. Again, there is the cause of that journey. Why are you embarking on this journey? And many of us have found ourselves on a journey that we cannot explain why we are doing this journey. We cannot explain why we are doing the things we are doing. We cannot explain why we have taken the direction that we have taken. And I like people who have a specific direction and they know where they are going. Sometimes you may meet people even along the way and someone is going nowhere. So someone said that a journey to nowhere, every path is okay. And every destination is okay. Because you are going nowhere. You need something that can be able to facilitate you on this journey to recovery. And I know I'm speaking to so many people that you have had pain and sorrow and you are under a lot of pressure to be able to be restored or to be re uh, uh, restored to your former self because you have lost so much so that pain has become like your daily bread a routine that you pursue every day every day you go through loss every day you are losing something but let me tell you something that this journey that David was embarking it was pushed by that loss and by pain and by pressure let me explain they came they came back from battle they found their families had been taken they found their possessions had been taken and the rest of the camp is burnt what happens they cry until they have no power to cry what happens later these people who are his friends because of their loss and pain they want to stone him that's why i told you he had become a constant victim so out of that it becomes the means through which it becomes the, the, the push that was necessary for the journey you realize every kind of journey is difficult and sometimes there requires some push something that will compel you something that will be aiding you something that will be burning in you so that you can be um, on your way to recovery and we find this journey to recovery or this road to recovery for David it was pushed by loss and pain and pressure so that you can use that loss you can use that pain you can use the pressure that you are under to push yourself to the next level to push yourself in this journey because sometimes you are not willing to and back on this journey again it starts with the action of pursuit because David was concerned with one thing now that all this has happened do I just stay here he inquired of the Lord shall I pursue but even when he asked he needed to take a step yes it is necessary for us to take a step he started pursuing he took the first step and we need to take that first step again this journey it is pushed by the knowledge of the promises of god now because what did god tell him pursue you shall overtake and recover all now recover all and overtake that is the promise that you shall overtake them and you shall recover all and one of the things that we are lacking whenever we feel like a, a, we are not willing to continue with the journey in pursuit to recovery it is because we do not understand the promise
promises of God. Failure to understand and know the promises of God will cause us to have lethargy, reluctance. You know, will cause us to be weary, to get tired so soon because we do not know what we are pursuing. But David knew by the time he was starting this journey, he already has success. So that what keeps us going? It is the knowledge of the promise. And most of us that are Christians, many times we are criticized because we seem to be embarking on a journey that is not yielding instant results, but we seem so passionate and we may be taken as foolish at times. But let me tell you something. We are not foolish. We know the promises of God. We know what he has promised. And therefore, that is what keeps us going. We keep push, we keep pushing, we keep struggling, we keep moving because we know the promises of God. And what did Daniel say in Daniel chapter number 11, verse 32 be there? And he said, but the people who know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. That's what the Bible says. People who know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. Meaning that it is necessary for you to know God. And when you know God, you must know what he has in store for you. You must know and understand the promises of God. That is what will keep you moving. That's what will keep you pushing. That's what will keep you, you know, persevering amidst many challenges. Because we are told in Hebrews chapter number 11, if you read towards the end, the Bible says that those heroes of faith of the past, they died waiting for the promise. Even though the promise was not fulfilled in their uh, dispensation, they died waiting and pursuing the promise. What happened? I told you the other day about the story of Elisha and Elisha knew what he was pursuing. If you read the book of 2 Kings chapter number 2, beginning from verse 1. Elisha knew what he was pursuing. That's why any time the sons of the prophets or the company of prophets told him that your master, do you know your master is going to be taken away from you today? He said yes, I know of it. But he didn't want to associate himself with them. He did not want to uh, remain with them. He pursued his master. Why? Because he knew what he was pursuing. And I ask a question at this point. Do you know the promises of God? Do you know what you are pursuing? Are you just there waiting for nothing? Are you suffering for nothing? Are you embarking on this journey for nothing? Are you, uh, you know, uh, forcing yourself and propelling yourself to something that you do not know? You must know and understand the promises of God. Now, let me give you a few keys to uh, recovery. These are very important keys that we learn from this story. Because we learn that David went and he recovered all. There are a few le lessons because this, this, I know these uh, subjects have been covered by so many, I always say so. Um, many of us have talked about this story of David and uh, pursuing and overtaking and recovering all. But let me tell you a few things and a few lessons that we can draw from it. The key to recovery. Number one, convert your loss into positive energy to pursue that's very important in the journey because journey needs energy and it needs energy without that energy you're not going to make it yes you're not going to make it that's why even if people are just walking just walking you don't walk with the weak sometimes those that are sick are excused not to walk why? Because they do not have the necessary strength. But you can convert, and you should always convert, your loss, your pain, that pressure that you are under, into positive energy to pursue the enemy and make recovery. Why? Because that pain, that pain, won't help you if you do not convert it into positive energy. That 
had sorrow, crying until you have no power, as these people did. Because we are told they cried until they had no more power. It can't help. It can't help. Until you turn it into positive energy. And let me encourage someone that is watching me this morning. And you are wondering, where will I turn to? I've been through a lot of losses. I've been, you know, laid off my job. My business is not working. My family is suffering. Maybe you are sick. Maybe you have a lot of debt that you are unable to pay. Maybe you are not seeing any future. You are not finding any hope in anything because you have gone through so much pain. But you cannot turn that loss and pain into positive energy that will make you recover. Let me tell you, turn that pain into positive energy that can make you recover whatever it is that you have lost. Number two, some keys to recovery. Always seek to know the will of God. Always seek to know the will of God. What is the will of God? What does God desire in this? Whenever you go through a challenge, always seek to know the will of God. That's why we learned that David inquired of the Lord. He wanted to know what does God desire in this? Let us not apply so much of our mind and our expertise in everything. We make everything as though it's normal and does not require God and we do it in accordance to our desires and ignore the Lord completely. Let me tell you something what the Bible says in Revelation chapter number 3 verse 20. That behold I stand at the door and knock and whoever hears my voice and opens the door then I will come in and I will dine with him and him with me. We should not ignore God in our road to recovery. Ask yourself, what does God want? That's why even Jesus, when he was crying at the Garden of Gethsemane, he pleaded with the Lord, if it is possible, this cup be removed from me, but not my will, but may your will be done. What is the will of God? What is the will of God? In that challenge that you are going through, what is the will of God? Because obviously, God has a plan for it. Obviously, God is aware of it. Obviously, God has a own map for it. He knew how or he knows how you are going to go through that challenge and how you are going to come through on the other end victorious. But if you do not seek the will of God, then you end up being a failure because of seeking your own desires seeking your own desire number three never give up when others give up that's all i'm going to emphasize never give up when others give up because this is a journey it is going to be long it is going to be tiring it is going to be tough it is going to be rough it is going to be uh, with a lot of challenges never give up when others give up the bible says in verse 10 that when they reached in this brook of Bissau, some like 200 men were left behind they were left behind but david continued with the 400 men because they were 600 now 200 have dropped off the race let me tell you even in this journey we started so many of us there are so many of us that started talking about this journey talking about success they were very passionate at the beginning and that's why many get tired along the way Paul was talking about it all over in his epistles. That's why he was asking Galatians, who bewitched you? You started so well. You were doing well. You were good believers. But now you have given up. But David did not allow himself to give up because others are giving up. He does not allow himself to be carried away by the emotions of the moment. Now, there comes a time when people, even people that were very passionate, drop along the way. And I know many of you are, 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 have gone through this. Because sometimes you start something with someone and along the way, they are bad on you. And even sometimes they may have been the ones that initiated the whole thing. They invited you into it. 
You got very excited and passionate about it. But somewhere along the way, they got tired and they left you in it. Some of you, you are stranded because the one that introduced to whatever it is that you have found yourself in is no longer in the journey with you. They have dropped the journey. But let me tell you, never give up because others are giving up. That's why God told Joshua that be strong and very courageous. Because God knew that that journey was going to be with a lot of challenges. A lot of enemies indeed. Sometimes the enemy may be scaring. Sometimes the enemy may be stronger and better weaponized and all manner of things. But he told him, be strong and be very courageous. David would not allow himself to be discouraged when they are discouraged. He did not allow himself to be carried away when they are carried away. He did not allow himself to be distracted when they are distracted. He did not allow himself to faint as the Bible says. They were faint. They were tired. He did not allow himself to be tired because they are tired. Let me tell you something. Don't allow yourself to be tired to be carried away, to be emotional, to be discouraged simply because everyone else is getting discouraged. Even in this COVID-19, I found many people who started very passionately. They were believing in God. I have said times without number. They were believing in God. They were waiting upon God. They were praying hard. They were telling people, relax, God is doing something. But somewhere along the way, they have chickened out. Fear have overwhelmed them. They are no longer in this journey they are no longer as believing or uh, as believers as they were that time they were no longer they are no longer as passionate about god doing something as they were at the beginning let me tell you it is natural when people start a race not everybody finishes a race but paul was saying that i ran to finish the race and get hold of that prize let me tell you this is a marathon race it is not a a, a, a short race and it is going to take a lot of resilience for you to be able to get the prize david did not allow himself to give up when everyone was giving up he proceeded with the journey he didn't stop there number four always identify destiny connectors it's very important to know these keys to recovery that always identify destiny connectors this egyptian that is written in verse 11 he was weak they found him along the way he had fainted but he had all the help that they needed to recover whatever it is that they had lost let me tell you something that they gave him food they gave him water they took time with him until he recovered when he recovered that's when now they are beginning to talk to him sometimes let me tell you destiny connectors will be very unlikely they will not be seeming as people that can be able to help you call them anything call them destiny helpers call them aids call them assistants call them people that will direct you call them anything but they are destiny connectors this egyptian was a destiny connector they wasted time with him and let me tell you something some of you have been stuck assisting some destiny connectors trying to resuscitate them to revive them to bring them back to life because even if they are weak let me tell you they hold something that could make a difference in your life they may hold the key to your destiny this egyptian held the key to the destiny of david and his men if they ignored him then they would have lost let me tell you and even when jesus was talking about good neighbor uh, neighborhood he asked who is your neighbor and he gave a, 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 a an example of a man that was beaten up by thieves he was on a journey and uh, he was left there to die he was robbed and everyone came passing but there came a samaritan who treated him who took care of him and later took him in a hotel and paid for his death and said anything that is going to incur while he is here i am going to return and settle the rest 
Now, that Samaritan, and Samaritans were not good people in the Bible. They were not regarded as pure breeds of the Jews, and the rest of the Jews did not have any association, association with them. The Bible says that even today, he has referred us to the good Samaritan. The good Samaritan was an ordinary person who would have remained ordinary if he did not assist this man that was beaten up and robbed. Sometimes we have ignored our destiny connectors. And let me say this, which I know many of you will consider controversial, that even those people that are successful, they will tell you, that not everyone that assisted them to, into success is successful themselves. Let me repeat that again. Not everyone that assisted the so-called successful that are successful themselves. Sometimes that person that you are ignoring because they seem to be behind you, because they seem to be weak, because they seem to be penniless, because they seem to be worthless, because they seem to be uneducated, because they seem to be old, because they seem to be not uh, uh, the, from the elite. Let me tell you, they could be holding the keys to your destiny. And you ignore them? Take time with them. Sometimes you'll be told you're wasting your time. But I'll tell you that not everyone who will propel you into success that is successful. And many of us are distracted. Living in our day and age, we are only focusing on the successful, the mandate ones, you know, the, the, the people that look like they have made it in life, they have achieved so much. Those are the ones we are thinking are our destiny connectors because they have made it so, much, so far. Let me tell you, those may not, at times God may use them, but may not be your destiny connectors. It is the people that you ignore. The little people, the weak people, the poor people, the old people, the vulnerable people, all those people that you ignore, they could be your destiny connectors. Always identify them. Take care of them. Take time with them. And they will lead you into your destiny. Because it was this Egyptian that led them. He took them. After they made an oath with him that they would not kill him, neither would they return him to, the, to his master, the Amalekite. He took them to where their wives and children had been taken and all their possession. He connected them to their destiny after they fed him, after they uh, bound his wounds, after they took care of him, after they revived him. So you need to revive your destiny connector. Maybe she or he could be somewhere weak, vulnerable, suffering, abandoned, neglected. They could be somewhere. <laughs> but if you continue to ignore them, your destiny will continue to be drawing further and further from you or running away from you because you have ignored your destiny connector. Now, number five, avoid premature celebrations. Avoid premature celebration. This is very important. Now, we are learning from these people that uh, when uh, in verse 16, that when this Egyptian took David and his men to where they were, what were they doing? What were they doing? The Bible says that they were there, they were eating and drinking and dancing. That's what they were doing. The Bible says in verse 16, and when he had brought him down, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of, uh, out of the land of Judah. Now, we can learn something from this. Twisted or on the flip side, that yes, it was the Amalekites, it is the enemy that is celebrating. They are eating, they are drinking, and they are dancing. But can I tell you they were doing what is called premature celebration? And many of us in the house of God and in the kingdom of God, we do premature celebrations. 
simply because we are temporarily winning, temporarily getting some things, temporarily successful, temporarily we, are, we seem to be doing well, we involve ourselves in premature celebrations. We are not there yet. Don't celebrate. It's too early. And this is the weakest link in battle. The weakest link in battle is eating and drinking and celebrating or dancing. Because you get carried away, you get emotional, you get overexcited, and you forget that you are in battle. Because the Bible says that David smote them, all of them, except like 400 or there about that fled with camels. They were young men. So it means that in number, they were too many. They were too many. And remember David's men, they were 600, 200 pulled out, they remained 400. And these 400 are the ones that are smiting these thousands and thousands of the enemies. So I'll tell you something, even as my fellow believer, that eating and drinking is good and dancing it is good it's good it's all right i like to do so myself it's good but make sure it is not premature celebration because i have seen some people who celebrate prematurely thinking that they have acquired victory thinking that they have already achieved their destiny only to realize they were on the way that was provision for the journey because remember when Elijah desired to die and he was lying down there and he requested for his life to be taken away by God and God brought him food through ravens and he was told rise up eat and drink for the journey is long so it is evident that God will occasionally provide our sustenance for the journey, will facilitate for the journey. But sometimes if we over celebrate thinking that we have made it simply because we are enjoying what was supposed to be for the journey, we will lose because at that point, that point, it is the weakest link in the battle. Many people are ambushed. They are caught off guard when they are eating, drinking, and dancing. So I'm going to encourage you, my fellow believer. You may have achieved some things, yes. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Glorify his name. But don't celebrate prematurely. You are not yet there. You have not yet achieved. You have not yet reached. That's why even Paul, after considering himself successful, having achieved so much, he was saying, I do not consider myself to have attained it yet. But one thing I do is that I push on, I push on. You know, he was saying, towards the mark of the high calling. So, even Paul, he said, I do not consider myself to have attained it yet. And when was he saying this? At the conclusion of his ministry and his life. And how is he supposed to say that at the conclusion? He is supposed to say, I have achieved, I have made it, I have, I am there, I am there, I am there. But he said, I am not there yet. Let me remind us as Christians, we are not there yet. Let me remind us as a, as a country, we are not there yet. Sometimes we indulge in premature celebrations and we are caught off guard. Because when you are celebrating, the likelihood of retaliation, because let me tell you, now on the flip side I told you that when the Amalekites stole everything from David and his men, David turns to be their enemy. So that David is their enemy here. Why? Because they have something that belongs to David. So that when they are eating and drinking and dancing, the enemy may strike at any moment. Be very careful. That's why the Bible says, when you think you are standing, then 
Then watch out, be very careful because that's the moment that you are about to fall. When you think that you are strong, be careful because that's the moment that you are about to fall. So avoid premature celebration. Number six and the last one. Never lose focus of the mission. Never lose focus of the mission. What was the mission at hand? Going to recover. Don't forget, going to recover. David, he smote these people. When he smote them, he didn't stop there. We are told in verse 18 that he recovered all. If you go back to verse 17, you realize that he smote them for a whole day until the next day. This is what the Bible says. And David smote them from twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men, which rode upon camels and fled. So, smiting them is enjoyable, let me tell you. As a fighter, any fighter will tell you, when you are smiting your enemy, it is good, it feels nice, it feels good. Some people get over excited about it, emotional about it. Because you remember what I told you? That David was not only concerned with overtaking them. He was not only concerned with pursuing them. He was also concerned with, will he recover? Will he recover? Because many of us, we have forgotten. Even at this point, when we are fighting this crisis, we have forgotten the mission at hand. We are dealing with temporary things, things along the journey, distractions along the journey. Smiting the enemy is good, crushing the enemy is good, but recovery was the mission. Don't forget the mission. Focus to the, on the mission because the mission is very important. Some of us come back with reports, we have smitten them, we defeated them. Then, was that the mission? Was that the mission? <laughs> because it is very important for us to focus with the mission. It was very possible, let me tell you. And this battle was very difficult. Remember, it's very difficult. Because when you have a hostage situation, you cannot just come attacking. No. Because the moment you just come attacking, you are risking those that are held hostage. And remember, who are they? They are wives their sons and their daughters so it required a lot of calculation for david so that even when he is attacking he is not risking the lives of their families he is not doing so so that he is doing this battle in a calculated way very tactically so that he does not risk his family he does not list the families of his people and all the possessions that they had lost. So he was focusing on the mission because it was very easy for someone else who, who was not very calculative to come and attack and crush them and say, we crush them, we finish them. And then you're asked, where are the families? Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Uh, it's like we lost them in the process. Is that, was that the mission? Was that the mission? Because sometimes we end up gaining some things while losing some others. Make sure on the road to recovery that you don't lose as you recover. Because sometimes the loss may be too big for you to withstand. Then what you recovered? Because they would have come victorious and shouting, we have crushed them like nobody's business. But what did you achieve? What did you achieve? And when I see people talking about so many things without talking about the main thing, the main thing, what was the mission at hand? Because that's the question. What was the mission at hand? For anyone that is declaring victory upon themselves, what was the mission at hand? Because unless you lay down the mission at hand and you, you, you tell us, this is what I was supposed to deliver and I have delivered, then that mission is not mission accomplished. No, no, no. 
that is not mission that can be considered successful. It can be considered very unsuccessful. Let me stop there for today, but tell you this. We will continue next week, but David recovered his wives, his sons and daughters, and the sons and daughters and the wives of all his men. And all the possessions, that's what we are told. He recovered everything, everything. Verse 18, the Bible says, and David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David recovered or rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking. Neither small or great, neither sons or daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Let me tell you something. We have lost so much as a country. We have lost our joy. We have lost our peace. We have lost our supply. We have lost our jobs. We have lost everything so much. So that many of us are still dealing with the sorrow. Many of us are still dealing with the pain. After losing so much, let me tell you. The promise of God is that we shall recover all. On this road to recovery, let me assure you that you shall recover all. And let me pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you recover your possessions. May you recover your family. May you recover your joy. May you recover whatever it is that you have lost in the hands of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. I want to declare and decree in your life. No more losses. In the name of Jesus. Because everything you have lost from the devil. In the hands of the devil. You are recovering it in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you have lost. You have lost your job. You have lost your health. You have lost your joy. Everything that you have lost, be it a property or anything, I decree, decree and declare, you shall recover it all. Nothing shall be lost in the hands of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we shall be restored. In the name of Jesus. How I pray, Heavenly Father, that you may remember my viewer, that as they mourn, and cry for their losses that this morning you are reminding them that they shall recover all in the name of jesus how i declare even as a nation we shall recover all how i declare even as families we shall recover all how i declare even as a as a, as a church we shall recover all in the name of jesus we give you praise and honor for you are together with us in jesus mighty name amen 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 Thank you very much. We want to come to a close of this service. But even before we do so, I want to pray for the offerings because it's important for us to give our offerings to complete this service. And I want to assure you that the Lord will bless you. You are going to give via the numbers that are going to be provided at the bottom of your screens. And the Lord is going to bless you. Um, I want to pray for the offerings and the tithes. Get them ready in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we praise you we honor you and glorify you for we know you are a faithful god and you are a powerful god a mighty god thank you for your word this morning thank you for assuring us that we shall recover all in the mighty name of jesus because my father and my god even though we have lost all jehovah god we have you and with you we shall recover everything in the mighty name of jesus i pray for my viewer and i pray for the offerings and the tithes that they are about to give oh dear lord help them recover oh dear lord they might be giving that but lord they have lost a lot they have even lost money and jobs and businesses and opportunities and everything that was making them an income but i want to pray that they will recover even as they give this morning in the mighty name of jesus i bless them before you as i bless all of us in the mighty name of jesus do i pray and also believe amen amen may the grace of god abound in you and may the lord be with you throughout the week till we meet again in jesus name there are times when we are met with fire even after going through difficult times we are met with fire but there comes a time when god is your only encouragement god has good thoughts even in our suffering god does not operate at the level of man Let
be that God is just waiting for the day that we will seek his kingdom first and prioritize the things of the kingdom so that all these things shall follow us Solomon knew <laughs> that he was not able to do anything unless he is helped by God our mandate as people of God is to go to come and to do after this darkness there is going to come a time when your prayer shall produce results in the name of Jesus the just shall live by faith without faith we cannot be able to receive and activate 